Well, it was the same two teams again tonight at Frost Arena, this time in men's basketball. South Dakota State hosting Denver, hoping for the same outcome that the women had last night in a big Summit League game. Skyler Flat from Clarkwell, Clarkwell like he is really having a tremendous year. Splashes home a three from the outside and uh, just to prove to all of us he can do it from anywhere on the court, he does it from the top of the key. He had five threes in the game and 20 points. Mike Dom was a little bit quiet in the game tonight, but he would uh, score here. Number 24, as he does so well in the paint, he had 10 points and eight rebounds. David Jenkins uh, decided, hey, uh, Skylar, let's have a little three-point shooting contest. He had five of them and 21 points. And you know, Mike Dom didn't entirely have a quiet night, because watch this. Uh, that's not quiet at all. That's a thunder dunk. Let's go to your scoreboard. They win 78 to 66. Flatten and Jenkins lead the way with a total of 10 threes between them. Jacks go to three and one in conference play. We did have a Thursday night doubleheader at the O'Gorman gym tonight. That's kind of fun. That's where the Knights hosting Washington and boys and girls hoops. Uh, took a while in the boys game to get any points at all, but Gabe Pearson finally gets the Warriors on the board. Then. Kellen Fultz for three, and the Warriors led seven to three in the first quarter, but then the uh, Knights get it going. Cole Hardy off the bench with a three, sparks his team. They go on a 12-0 run. Watch a coy, a coy as uh, they miss the shot, but they uh, get the rebound out to number 35, who drains three of his game-high 18 points. Uh, the play of the night goes to the Warriors, though. Here's Pearson with a steal. Yeah, he's gonna. You better make it. He dunks it. Nice play by Gabe Pearson, but Eddie Mailer beats the buzzer at the end of the quarter. Knights win at 60 to 43. In the first game, it was the top ranked O'Gorman Knights taking on the number five Warriors. Knights were up 18 to one when I got in, didn't even have the uh, iris adjusted yet. But there's your basket for Washington by Peyton Reimerson. Their first hoop of the game 12 minutes in. Awadi Akoi, great up and under move there for the Knights as they dominate this one. Carly Kunkel from three. Oh, just nothing but net on that. That was clean. And watch this. Shot clock's running out. They give the ball to Emma Ronsek from almost mid-court. And she can shoot from closer, too. She had 18 points. So Gorman wins 53-24. We had another great matchup at the Vermilion Gym where the fourth ranked Tanagers in Class A hosted the number one Orioles of Lennox. Madison Vlaschen in the post off the glass. She led Lennox with 19 points. Orioles up one early. Tanagers would heat up. They kicked the ball to Lexi Plitzowite. Three of her game high 24 points. I think you're going to recognize these Vermilion names. Mom, of course, is the Coyotes women's coach. And how about Casey Herbster, dad's the AD. Uh, that's 10 points for her. Vermillion led by five after one and by as many as nine in the second quarter. But Rihanna Philippi gets things going. Great crossover move here. Lennox rallies to go up two at halftime. Then in the third, it's gonna be Philippi with a steal, goes all the way. She had 14 points. Lennox wins a dandy, 63 to 55. And then it was the boys game, same two teams. Orioles take control early. Zach Lasinger splits the double team and he's gonna take it right in for the score. Orioles open on a 5-0 run. Tanagers come back with some crisp passing here, finding a knifing Dylan Geestring. Uh, Vermillion back within one. But it was all Lennox from there. Brock Anderson backs down the double team and uh, nobody's gonna stop him. He puts it up and in. They go up by eight, and it doesn't stop here. Josh Arlt, nice pass to Will Doherty. Uh, he's gonna hang in the air and hit the shot off the glass. 68-47, the visitors with the sweep. O'Gorman again, 60-43. Flandre Indian School wins tonight. Mitchell Christian as well. Castlewood and Bonham victorious. Winner and Chester as well, along with West Sioux and Hanson and Girls Hoops. There's your O'Gorman and Lennox scores. Again, the top rated teams, both victorious, ACDC and Dubrook win, along with MCM and Bridgewater Emory, West Central and winner victorious, Esteline Hendricks and Parker, uh, Clark Willow Lake in double overtime beats Millbank, Elkin Lake Benton, Northern, Northern in wrestling goes to five and one with a win over SMSU. The Stampede are back home tomorrow night where they have played extremely well. 
The loss to Waterloo snapped a five-game home win streak for the Herd, but they bounced right back with a 3-2 win over Des Moines Saturday. It's rather amazing when you consider how young this team is. The head coach, Scott Owens, thought they'd eventually be good, but not this fast. They lost only once in the entire month of December after a great October and a subpar November. We started, we were home a lot in October, and then we, we really had a tough uh, road stretch with a relatively young team, but I think we're coming of age now, and, and I think we'll, you know, stabilize for the most part. Overall, we had a pretty good first half. I, I know we're not very far up in the standings, but our record's pretty good, and I think our team's coming together nicely, so we're all very excited about the second half. Bad thing is, despite their great month, they barely picked up any ground in a very competitive division. And finally, the Wild tonight at home against a very explosive Winnipeg team, and watch the, uh, the tip in by Zucker. Jason Zucker in front. Uh, those are the kind that drive goalies nuts. These are the kind that make goalies go, all right, where's my defense? Zucker again had two goals. He's got 12 on the air. That turned out to be the winner as the Wild win it. Three to two, your final. They are 22, 18 and three and playing much better the last couple of weeks. And that's sports. We'll all be right back.